Hello, my name is Anya Mitros, and in my VMS course, I'd like to teach you how to do my job. The world needs more engineers who can do battery management well. In the next four slides, I'll lay out why I'm teaching this course and why it might be of interest to you, the prerequisites, or what you should know to understand my lectures, the scope, or the material that I'll cover, and a little bit about my background. The balance of nature is integral to fresh water and clean air. As a mom, I want my children and their children to grow up with safe drinking water, predictable weather, and natural beauty. And, I fear, some of that is in peril. I see climate change in the warmer winters where I grew up, in more frequent severe storms in coastal areas, and in droughts affecting sub-Saharan Africa and cotton farmers in Texas. I'd like to be part of the solution. And in as much as I can see, the path to sustainable energy involves electrification. And electrification involves batteries. A lot of batteries are being envisioned and defined and designed and built worldwide. And behind every battery product are engineers. The transition to sustainable energy will be smoother if each of these engineers understands how to design for safety, long product lifetime, and predictable behavior, all necessary for a good customer experience. I'd like to give some of those engineers a head start by teaching what I've learned in my 16 years in the industry. I offer this course as my contribution to the path to sustainability. I'd like this course to be accessible to undergraduate students and worthwhile to any electrical engineer who isn't already deeply experienced with batteries. In designing my lectures, I've assumed an understanding of some basic electrical engineering concepts. V equals IR, I equals C dV dt, and the RC time constant. The first one relates voltage to current and resistance. Sometimes in the course, I will say impedance. Impedance is a more general term than resistance, and understanding the difference between resistance and impedance is not required for this course. However, if you don't understand that current flow across some resistance causes a voltage drop, colloquially referred to as an IR drop, learn about Ohm's law before diving into my course. I equals C dV dt describes behavior in time. In later lectures, we will refer to the related concepts of RC time constant and corner frequency. If you don't feel fluent with RC time constants and corner frequencies, the lecture on noise may be gibberish to you. My goal in this course is to teach you how to design good BMS hardware as an electrical engineer. We'll lightly touch firmware and mechanical design, but neither of those is the focus. I would like students to finish this course with the skills to analyze system trade-offs for a battery management system, whether that's for an electric car or a stationary home battery or smaller and less safety critical applications. Let's list the topics that I aim to cover. The introductory lecture focuses on batteries, a prerequisite to managing them. Then we'll discuss BMS functions. We must understand what the BMS does before optimizing the design. The lecture on cell behaviors will skim over how cell voltage relates to state of charge and temperature and current, how voltage behaves in time after a current pulse, and factors affecting cell aging. We'll show how those behaviors are represented in a cell model. This lecture is a prerequisite to the following lecture on the basics of BMS algorithms. I'll teach you the fundamental concepts and refer you to another resource if you want to dive deeper. I'll teach you how to design battery temperature sensing. We'll discuss the value of accuracy and quantify it in dollars for both cell voltage measurement and battery current measurement. Quantifying the value of a design parameter helps us engineer a well-optimized system. We'll learn how to design a cell balancing circuit. Safety is a huge topic, super important for large batteries such as automotive batteries and home energy storage. It's less critical for devices in which battery failure is less impactful, for example, where the battery is small enough to be unlikely to hurt a person. Noise. Ah, motors and inverters generate a lot of noise when they switch. So, we'll discuss filtering on the PCB and inside the BMS chip, and grounding. For high-voltage batteries, 
Often, multiple cell voltage sensing chips are daisy chained, and we'll look at what the market presently offers. For reliability testing, high temperatures are used to accelerate aging, with the Arrhenius equation to calculate how many hours in an oven emulates lifetime at a lower temperature. We'll discuss the different architectures appropriate for different systems. Then we'll do just a fun lecture looking inside chips. I have a side hobby of getting chips decapped, which means removing the black epoxy package to reveal the silicon dye inside. We'll take a look at some decapped chips and discuss what we see. Good fun. I'd also like to talk about ESD design. You don't need to understand the ESD diode architecture inside a chip to design a good BMS PCB, but it sure can help with debugging when something blows up and you don't know why. And one little disclaimer. I'm recording this slide having created about a quarter of this material. The details may change. Before you trust me to teach you, you might be interested in my background. I attended Rice University and studied computer science, but after an internship realized that I wanted something more tangible than software. In a life decision that was honestly immature, I decided that getting a PhD was a good way to switch fields to electrical engineering. That was a lengthy means of accomplishing my goal, but unlike some rash life decisions, worked out just fine. My first job out of graduate school was at Maxim, designing the analog circuits inside battery monitoring chips. My group designed chips for tablets and laptops and also electric cars. Then I moved on to Tesla, where I was responsible for the battery monitoring chips in the Model 3. That included writing the chip specification, planning what to do when the first chips weren't quite perfect but prototype cars needed to be built, defining production test limits, and much more. I loved the variety of my responsibilities. Then I worked at Continental, a 140-year-old German company best known for tires, but which supplies many car parts to many car manufacturers. At Conti, I learned a more traditional approach to automotive safety and glimpsed what other major car manufacturers wanted in their BMSs. Then I worked for a couple small startups. I joined Taveni out of curiosity about Martin Eberhardt, who was then leading Taveni and previously founded Tesla. Sadly, Taveni ran out of money in the summer of 2020. At Lunar, I helped architect and bring to life a BMS for a home energy storage system targeted at homes with solar panels. Since leaving Lunar, I started working on this course on battery management systems. With that, let's get started. And thank you for joining me on the path to sustainability.